Uh, sorry guys, looks like I was disconnected for a few seconds there. in there on my watch. How about if I do this? While the guard is busy picking his fingernails, you quaff the fruity tasting elixir. Its masking effects tickle the tips of your toes with a tingling sensation. While you don't feel any different on the inside, you know your outward appearance has changed when the guard glances up at you. Oh, hey, yeah, Leonard. Is it time for my shift change already? Ah, yes, I'm here to relieve you. You better go and get some shut-eye while you still can. You don't gotta tell me twice. I feel like I've been on my feet all day long. Don't worry, I'll keep this vault nice and secure. You can count on me. Yeah, sure, just keep your back straight. The hawk's in a foul mood today for some reason. The guard stretches his shoulders and walks away, leaving you all alone with the bank vault. You find the hawk's treasure map framed with pride. It's little more than a tattered corner of a larger hole. No wonder the hawk didn't get very far. This is barely a scrap. Squinting at the half-torn line work, you can make out the cartographer's description of dry dragon bones with a red X marking the spot. The swamp. Hmm, that carcass looks awfully familiar. I wonder if it's the same as that one rotting out in the swamp. I guess the hawk never had much reason to go searching there. Not many real estate investment opportunities. Right, so now we have to go back to the swamp. So let's make ourselves another couple of hearth seeds. I need some water. But 
I believe there's a fresh water source down where the old man and his old zombie man and his wife are. Head to the docks. probably couldn't have used that because I was right near the portal. Oh well. It's not like, um, they're rare. the fairy circle and where is that ah it's down towards the left right over here So I need a rainbow roll. I need a glitter bomb. I need some dough. I need some milk. 
What is it the fairy circle wants? Oh! Hello? Okay. So... 
I gave it the... What's this? That worthless coin said this would summon the rumbling, not some flowery deer. You take a closer look at the discarded floral branch. Antler? Branchler? One of the growing buds looks larger than the rest, and it twitches when you poke it. Oh, hello there. Looks like this sprout needs some fresh fairy water. There's no water at this fairy circle, but surely there are others about. I'd better go plant this thirsty fellow and see what happens. Okay, so we need to visit the fairy lake in the fields. like just the place. You stick the budding branchler into the fertile soil of the fairy circle. The suspicious flower bug wiggles with glee, drinking up the magical pond water. After a few minutes, nothing else happens. Come on, come on, I don't have time to watch flowers grow. Maybe I can speed things along a bit. A little pick-me-up should be all that's needed here. A growth potion. Okay, so what do we need for the growth potion? Okay, so we need apothecary humors. We need magic paste. So I need to get some milk. Luckily, we're in a place where I can easily find some. on the stumpy branch and it shakes with energy. The ground trembles as roots rip out around your feet. Oh. Wow. You find yourself looking up at an odd little house that has grown out of the flower bud. An even odder little man sits on the porch glaring at you. Oh, will you just leave me be? I don't know how you managed to track me down, but please just go away. Hold on now. You've led me on quite the merry goose chase. You are the rumpling, are you not? He sighs and cleans a smudge off his spectacles. Congratulations, you caught me. The story is true, then. I've caught you, and now you must grant me my weight in gold. Curse that stupid... <laughs> Achoo! Curse that stupid legend. Look, sorry you came all this way, but I don't do that stuff no more. I'm retired. These days I'm more into woodworking. Wouldn't you rather have a cute little birdhouse instead? I know a magical contract when I hear one. I found you fair and square, so cough up the gold, shorty. <laughs> 
Too bad. I threw my alchemist's stone into a bottomless lake. Without that stone to make gold, I'm as poor as a pauper. Why would you do that? Why'd you think? Because villains like you kept on trying to shake me down for money. All that rotten stone ever did was bring me misery. Well, I'm not leaving empty-handed. You created the alchemist's stone in the first place. You must know how to make another. He blinks at you with his magnified eyes. You want an alchemist's stone of your own? <laughs> well, okay, it's your funeral, lady. I've still got the distilling equipment in my workshop. Just bring me these ingredients to make a new alchemist stone. So, alchemical alloy, crystal newt spine, and golden egg. Okay, so, we need to get a golden egg for the market and craft an alchemical alloy. So let's see what we need for the alchemical alloy. So we need a puzzle box. That's fine. A silver fox fur. So we need to go back up to the mountain to get that. <laughs> yeah, I can't really do a Boston accent even though I grew up near there.
right, let's make this goose sparkle. All right, we're good. going to do with the alchemist stone. I doubt we're going to do human transmutation with it. It's pretty expensive. I heard it'll cost you an arm and a leg. light up at the sight of the alloy and he rubs his fingers together in anticipation. The rumpling looks away from the newt's spine, gesturing vaguely at the ground beside him. You lay it nearby. You pass the golden egg into the hands of the rumpling, who receives it tentatively, as if it could hatch at any moment. Collecting all of the components into his arms, the rumpling disappears into his little treehouse. You can't tell exactly what he's doing inside, but the sounds and smells emanating from the chimney make you think it's better left unknown. He emerges some time later, with singed eyebrows and foggy glasses. Eureka! I've done it! He holds out a glowing emerald with a pair of iron tongs. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead, it's yours! You appraise the glittering jewel. It's abnormally heavy in your hands. Very pretty. The little man's giggling abruptly stops and his face falters with disbelief. Oh, hmm. What's the matter? You seem disappointed. I, oh, it's nothing. This isn't just not what I was expecting is all. He strokes his beard thoughtfully. I guess I should have told you earlier, but there's a slight, uh, curse to the stone. It can only be touched by one whose heart is free of avarice. How convenient of you to leave that part out. Since you went to all the trouble of tracking me down, I just assumed you were in it for the gold. Oh my, no. I don't care much for the wretched stuff. This gold is meant for someone else. Well, I gave you what you asked for. Our deal is done. Now leave me in peace. All right. All right. No need to be rude. I've got to bring this stone back to the millers. <laughs> all right. So we've got ourselves an alchemist stone. Heading back to the mill. You're back! The hawk will return with his goons any minute now. Don't worry, I've got a solution to your monetary problems right here. You hold up the alchemist's stone proudly. Oh, that's a very fine jewel, but I don't think it will be nearly enough to satisfy the hawk. Just stand back and watch. All this grain is just waiting to be spun into gold. the alchemist's stone to a bushel of straw and it instantly transforms into a mound of sparkling riches. Amazing! I can't believe my eyes! You place the stone into a barrel of grain and it melts through the kernels like butter. The barrel bursts under the weight of glittering golden coins spilling out onto the floor. Wow, it's a miracle! You 
roll the alchemist's stone into a bag of flour and mountains of golden dust risp through the canvas sack. How is this possible? I've never seen so much gold in my life. Yep, Rapunzel. Before the millers can so much as count a single coin, the door crashes open. The hawk strides into the mill, flanked by a pair of guards cracking their knuckles. Time's up. Where's my money? Yeah, pay up, squirts. Master Hawk, not to worry, we've got your payment right here. His eyes open wide at the sight of the piles of gold strewn about the mill. What? But how? Never you mind how. This should be more than enough to cover the costs of the miller's debts and the deed to the property. I don't understand unless... No, it can't be. He points a hooked talon at you accusingly. You, you're the rumpling. There's no other explanation. Guard, seize her. The two goons leap forward and grab you roughly by the arms. You're making a terrible mistake. Just take your money and leave these good people in peace. Don't play smart with me, imp. I know how the legend goes. I've caught you, and now you must give me my weight in gold. Oh, she's gonna give it to him, all right. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm rich. I'll lock you up and squeeze you for any every penny you've got. I'll be the wealthiest hawk in the entire kingdom. No, the entire world. Now, pay out my first installment, Rumpling. He outstretches his hand towards you greedily. As you wish. No sooner does the cold stone touch the hawk's skin than a brilliant flash of yellow light engulfs the mill. When the light fades, the hawk stands before you, transmuted into a solid gold statue. What magic is this? Horrified, the two soldiers beat a hasty retreat through the door. What happened? Is he okay? You tuck the stone safely back into your satchel and give the hawk statue a pat. I think this should set you up nicely. Just don't go spending it all in one place. Thank you. How could we ever make this up to you? Live a rich and full life. That ought to be enough for anyone. You notice a stray feather glinting on the floor. You pluck the golden feather and run your fingers along the gleaming barbules. It makes a sound like coins falling into a wishing well. The soul of the hawk. This is my payment. The souls of the stag, hawk, hogs, and wolf rattle inside your pack like angry insects. That's the last of these villains. Now, it's time to put an end to this wretched business with the goat. All right. We're headed back home. And now I am really excited to see the end of this. Just hope there aren't any more fetch quests. excited you you can't really tell but it's like wow we're, we're almost at the end we're really close what's going to happen the 
goat paws the floor with a cloven hoof. You've returned. I was beginning to grow impatient. I would have thought patience to be one of your strong suits, but don't fret, I have brought you the last of your souls. Delicious, are they not? You know what to do. Shimmering sensations of the hawk wash over you, the nib of a quill scratching on parchment, coins clinking, the sharp snap of a closing padlock. Your eyes water at the smell of the hawks, grunting swine and buzzing flies, a cleaver falls onto a wooden block, blood, bone, meat. A chill runs through your fingers as the stag sockets into the wall, condescending laughter, schemes in the snow, pride, arrogance, hubris. Your mind sinks into shadow in the presence of the wolf, soft footfalls padding through dried leaves, hot breath, big eyes, sharp teeth. souls vibrate with incandescent intensity. They seem to melt into their recesses, boiling away into tiny pinpricks of starlight. Soon, nothing remains of them except twelve smoldering scorch marks on the stone wall. Ah, well done! That's that. Our contract is fulfilled. It was a pleasure doing business with you. Hang on. What about your end of the deal? You said you would return my memories to me. Did I? Well, perhaps I misspoke. You never really had any to begin with, my dear. What are you talking about? I just don't remember them. I woke up and... And met me? Yes. That sounds about right for your very first memory. What? But you told me that I brought this sleeping maiden to you. That I asked you to save her soul. Oh, what I meant to say is that she came to me. She asked me to save her own soul. But it's so very easy to get confused. Oh. You. Her. Really. What's the difference? Dawning realization creeps over you like ice water. Her life was cut short, whether by the wolf's fangs or the hog's cleaver or under the weight of a dozen other wrongs I do not know. But in desperation, she called out to me, so we struck a deal. I would save her soul in exchange for theirs, one for twelve. But it's not like I could let her go collect them herself. She needed to stay here, you see, as insurance. So, so what then? You created me, is that it? To collect those souls on her behalf? Well, I should say that she created you. Snipped off a piece of herself to do it. It was all worked out in the contract, of course. And now that contract is fulfilled. Panned out nicely for everyone, I'd say. So if you, by which I mean she, ever need to get out of another mind, don't hesitate to give me a shout. Ta-ta for now. The room fills with a flash of blinding light. You blink, and the goat is gone, leaving only a goat-shaped hole in the world. Slowly, you turn to face the sleeping maiden. You feel sluggish and heavy. You take a straight step towards the gilded coffin. Your legs snap like dry twigs, and you crumble to the floor. The cauldron is the last to fall. It resounds with a hollow clang as it bounces off the ground. You slowly open up your eyes and see the vaulted ceiling of the hall. You raise your hand to touch the clear crystal surface of the gilded casket. The glass lid slides open effortlessly, and you swing your legs to sit up. The marble floor is smooth and cold under your bare feet. You stoop down to pick up the familiar metal cauldron. Slowly, memories come back at its touch. Thank you for playing Witchwood. Created by
by Alien Trap Games. So that was the end. So it turned out we were the ones to save ourselves the whole time. And it was a puppet that we created in order to save ourselves. All right, so that was Witchwood, everyone. And I'm very happy that we managed to make our way through it, although the goat still kind of makes me wonder who was that? Are they supposed to be analogous to the devil? I mean, definitely looked pretty demonic. And all the fairy tale influences were there. I mean, we had Little Red Riding Hood, we had Snow White, we had Rapunzel, we had the Three Little Pigs from Hell. And that was a very interesting title. I mean, there were some parts that I didn't really like, especially the whole part with the leech in the woods. But, I mean, I had... I thought this was going to be a cozy game at first. It was... It had its cozy parts, but it was very interesting. I loved the art style, loved the music, and gotta say that I really did like this title, and I'm glad that I decided to um, take a risk on it. So, what this means is on Thursday we're going to be playing a new game. And I'm going to end things off early tonight, folks. Since this is the very end of Witchwood, I don't believe there's any post-game stuff. So, let's take a look at who else is streaming. Hmm, let's see. Alright, so it looks like Shellshock Prime is playing Ninja Gaiden, so we are going to raid him. And on Thursday night when we return, there will be a brand new game that is being played. I don't know what it is yet, but we will find out what it is. So, anyway folks, it has been lovely, and I hope that you have a great week. And may all of your tea times be perfect.